Big thanks to Bernhard for sponsoring this video. I'm going to show you how to get the most smoke on your ribs using a pellet grill while making delicious spare ribs. It's all about convenience these days and that's why people want to get a pellet smoker just like this one. And I do recommend getting pellet smokers because they are fantastic. They work on the dial, you just rotate it, set it to temperature, load it up with a couple of pellets and the rest is done. You don't need to do anything, you don't need to worry about it, it's very very easy. However, if you want to make good barbecue ribs on a pellet smoker, there are a few things you need to consider. For this occasion I selected some beautiful spare ribs. Look at these beauties. We have a beautiful amount of fat, a little bit of that loin sitting on top, but overall regular ribs. The membrane on the back is already removed and they're clean, ready to go. First step is to get flavor on these ribs. Now normally I would put rub on these ribs and I might use something like mustard or mayonnaise or something to make sure that that rub sticks to that pork. However, if you want to get the maximum amount of smoke flavor on these ribs, you don't put anything on. You just put a rub on. That way you're exposing the meat to more smoke coming off that pellet smoker. I'm gonna start by making a Pitmaster X classic barbecue rub. Consisting of two tablespoons salt, two tablespoons of paprika powder, two tablespoons of onion powder, and one tablespoon of garlic powder. But to make it stand out more, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of ground black pepper and half a tablespoon of ground cumin. I'm gonna mix that up and my rub's ready to go. That's one beautiful and tasty rub. You can make this yourself at home, it's very very easy and you only need some ingredients from the supermarket so very easily done. I'm going to start by sprinkling on the rub on the back of the ribs, creating a nice base layer. Flip them around, do the other side as well until you have a nice coat of beautiful classic Pitmaster X's barbecue rub on your ribs. These ribs are ready to go, let's focus on our pellet grill and how to set it up properly. This is the Bernhardt smoker. And before I started cooking, I cleaned it. I vacuumed the inside of the pellet smoker. You might be thinking, whoa, whoa, dude. Vacuuming the inside of a pellet smoker? That's right. You can use it to vacuum your barbecue. That's way the cleanest it can be. Clean the grill grate so it's ready to go. At the end of every cook, I aim to finish off with as little as pellets as I possibly can. That way I always use fresh pellets straight out of the bag, stored in a dry location. For this cook, I'm gonna be using hickory pellets. Now, if you want a more pronounced smoke flavor, you're looking for stronger pellets. So hickory is a great place to start. You might wanna use cherry, but you wanna stay away from the light smoke flavors. So hickory. My first choice, second choice, cherry. Let's fire it up, turn it on, set the dial to 120 degrees Celsius. And keep in mind that temperature is important because with a pellet smoker, the rule is the lower the temperature, the more amount of smoke you get. In the meantime, the salt draw out the moisture of the ribs and the rub sticking very nicely. Now the ribs can go on, thickest part pointing towards the hottest part of the grill. There we go, second rib in. I'm gonna close the lid and all I need to do now is wait. I want at least three hours of smoke on these ribs before I even open that lid. I checked that three hours on the ribs and they got a beautiful color but they weren't quite done yet. So after another hour, they look like this. And look at the color that we created on these ribs. It's absolutely magical. Now, if we take one of these ribs and slice into it, we can see that the inside has a beautiful smoke ring. Absolutely perfect, almost from edge to edge smoke ring. And that's what I'm looking for if I make ribs. Now, of course, I just cut into it to show you guys where we're at, what the situation is like. But I'm gonna put these ribs back on the smoker and I'm gonna put on some barbecue sauce because not only do I want that nice dry out bark that sits there, not only do I want the smoke ring, but I also want some sticky sweet sauce to go on top. Starting with a cup of ketchup, a tablespoon of Worcester sauce, three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, four tablespoons of our barbecue rub, two tablespoons of honey, and a teaspoon of mustard to finish it off. Mix it up and let it get up to a syrupy bubble. And once that sauce looks freaking delicious, it's time to glaze the ribs with it. Now the reason that I'm doing this on the barbecue is that the sauce can connect with the crust 
and you don't end up with those ugly brush stripes. If you put on cold barbecue sauce, you're gonna have brush stripes. If you do it on the grill and let them sit for a little while, it's going to disappear. The ribs look like a million bucks. Absolutely delicious. They got that nice orange red combined with that brown caramelized color. Oh, when the ribs look like this, you know it's gonna be good eating. Absolutely beautiful. Nice, juicy, tender, lots and lots of smoke ring. A good rib is a well-balanced rib. It shouldn't be too smoky. It shouldn't be too spicy. It shouldn't be bland. It shouldn't be dry. It should be juicy, but not too fatty. What I'm trying to say is we're making something that tastes, well, rich, creamy, delicious, tasty, but at the same time, you gotta realize you're working with waste meat. It's cut off from the pig. All the rest is used to sell as prime cuts. And this is what they throw in a big bucket and leave for us, the scavengers. Smoky ribs, these can't be terrible. They must be amazing, they must be. <laughs> mm. wow. And they are. This is how you want to make them. Fantastic backyard ribs. That crunch, perfect. A little bit savory, a little bit sweet, not too much of both. Absolutely perfect. And this goes for the whole world. Doesn't matter where you're from. There's no particular style. It's all about what the rule says is balance. Not too much sauce. I'm not a sauce guy, but I respect the sauce. Not too much rub, not too much smoke, but you need all of those, all of those. Smoke, ribs, sauce, juiciness, smoke ring, everything. I'm, I'm, I'm repeating myself. It's just delicious. It's just good eating. It's just as simple as that. Mm -hmm. I am repeating myself, right? Yeah. yeah. And I feel the same way, it's like, but it's kind of hard to explain. Yeah. It shouldn't be too much and it shouldn't be too little and that makes it perfect. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, it's like fast food. Yeah. You get to enjoy yeah. it and you enjoy it a lot. Yeah. But it shouldn't be, well, it but shouldn't be something you could eat a lot of. We can be really purist about mm -hmm. ribs. No. We're the type of guys that say, only salt and pepper and smoke and keep it pure. But in the end, we're okay. also, we respect this and we respect this because of the balance. It's but the I, sauce. Basically the video is not about it. The video is about how did we get smoke on the oh. ribs? How do you think we did? <laughs> From zero to 10. Uh, this is a 10, no brainer. A 10. What kind of ribs are these? Spare ribs. Expensive ones? Cheap ones. That's what I want to hear. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, then you know where to look for the recipe on pitmasterx.com, of course. See you guys next time. Until then, it's Marcus. And keep on grilling. You enjoy those ribs? Mm-hmm. You're eating them all? Uh, I guess so. Oh, huh. this is way too good. Yeah. No, I agree. Way too good. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm.